Dr. Charles Pearson is our guest. He is the new superintendent of Normandy Schools. Dr. Charles Pearson, welcome to the Big 550 here in St. Louis. And thank you, for the you got it. We need to turn his microphone on. Let's try that again. All right. Welcome <laughs> to the show. Thank you so much. You got it. Okay, good. Now, um, you, we were just, just talking off the air. You were retired for how long? I was retired for six years. Six years. And before that, you were? I retired uh, from the Maplewood Richmond School District, where I served three years as a middle school principal and then three years as the assistant superintendent. So you've been watching all of this unfold over the last number of years. Watching it and experiencing it, I've actually been a resident in the Normandy School District for 20 years. Okay. And one of the things that really struck me about this, if I can talk a little bit about my journey yeah, there. Yeah, please do. Um, while... While I was busy being principal and doing all those things and living in the district, I didn't really pay as much attention to what was going on academically. Uh, and so suddenly you look up and realize that this is a district that is in trouble. Mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to serve on the transition task force as, it, as we took a look at what might happen to the district if it didn't regain accreditation. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I ended up serving on the governing board. So my involvement just kept increasing, increasing, and increasing, but all around the idea of what could I do to help. So mm -hmm. suddenly I find myself... And then, Here. so who hired you? Who asked you to become the new superintendent of the Normandy School Districts? The, when the state oversight took place, they appointed a special board, the Joint Executive Governing Board. Okay. And so when the previous superintendent resigned, they asked me if I would serve as an interim role uh, beginning in January up until the end of June while the process was put in place to, see, to find a permanent, sub, excuse me, a permanent superintendent. And then they and and you are the permanent superintendent. That is correct. As of this past Thursday, I participated in the search process, did the screenings, did the interview, and so forth. And then I was among those names that were submitted to the board, and they selected me. Uh, last week or so, there were a couple of stories in the St. Louis Post Dispatch that per portrayed the Normandy School District as an a, a complete and utter failure. And um, teachers not teaching, students not even p staying awake in class for this post-dispatch reporter to take a picture of them. Mm -hmm. uh, complete and utter failure. Mm -hmm. Was that an accurate description of what, what was going on? I would say that what is accurate, in, and, and I stated this in my response, what is accurate is there is inconsistency without a doubt from classroom to classroom within the district. What I have observed and what I begin my response with is that I have seen solid teaching. I have seen teachers who need growth. And yes, there does exist some teaching there that is not good for children. I've seen it all. So all of those actually exist simultaneously. The state took over Normandy because it wasn't working. And, That's correct. And, and yet it <laughs> seems like it's worse now that the state took it over. The state took over because of an accreditation process right. and that accreditation process meant that the district would end up lapsing. This is the first year of an implementation of a new system and there's always going to be challenge within the first year. So we acknowledge the fact that the way things began, the fact that there was more training that needed to be available for teachers around classroom management, those things did not take place, but mid-course corrections began to happen really in October around some of those things that didn't happen at the beginning. So when you say, is it worse? It Parents have told us, you know what, this place isn't as good as it was last year, but what we look at now is where we go from here. Um, also, while this was going on, you lost, you were allowed, or students were allowed to leave yes. the Normandy School District. Yes, yes. Um, how much did that help or hurt the situation in Normandy? I'm going to answer that question from two perspectives. First, I want to say that I understand those parents who chose to make that choice. In their case, them being able to leave helped them individually. But from a system's point of view, it, it really it did hurt the district only because uh, the dist our receiving districts have a full range of tuitions. And those tuitions are higher than what our students normally get per pupil expenditure. So that means that when many children left, additional money is left with them, which impacted programs in our district. So as a result of that, budget changes have occurred. And as I was reflecting and thinking about this question, 
We have lost instructional coaches because the budget was reduced. We lost a gifted program because the budget was reduced. We had a more comprehensive summer school program that we lost because the budget was, was reduced. And all of those factors really have impacted the children that, that, we, we, uh, that we have. And because it was considered unaccredited, kids were allowed to leave. The money left with the kids. They ended up going all over. But you also made wholesale changes with with the with the teachers too right you didn't you fire all the teachers the the entire district started over july one all contracts of any kind were stopped at, at june 30th and it all began so the district found itself in july hiring a brand new staff uh, administrators the works in order to be ready to start school and focus for the next year yeah one of the arguments or one of the things we've heard on the show is that normally school district I was struggling, but I was doing okay. And was it Riverview Gardens where the influx of the students came from another school district and then brought those test scores down in Normandy? It is, it, a, it wasn't Riverview Gardens. It was Wellston. Wellston, that, I always that get was, that That confused. was next to us. And um, wh while I can't comment on specific impact of those scores on ours, I will say this, that when you have one uh, low-performing district joined to another low-performing district, the reality is, is you, the problem is just is still there. Mm -hmm. uh, there are those who certainly advocate that Normandy was making some progress. That move took place. Once again, there had to be some restart. Um and, and it, it did not yield the success that many people hoped it would yield. Um, what, what type of student left the Normandy School District? Was it the straight-A students who wouldn't, wouldn't feel they were getting enough education? Was it the troubled kid who thought, parents thought they need more structure somewhere else? What type of student, or was there an average uh, type of student that left the school district? I, I will not classify... A particular type because there's a range of students as you said there were those students who certainly were achieving at a higher level but but can candidly a range of students that because really the transfer is about parents and their decision to do what was best for their child mm -hmm. and in that case parents from all those arenas of all those kinds of children decided we're going to take advantage of this because we want better for our child all right so uh going forward sure you've seen this you say you have to understand the problems to to fix the problems how do you go about fixing teacher morale how do you go about fixing these students who are not learning where, where do you even begin to start this process well you begin by addressing the, the first piece around teachers because teachers are that critical fact superintendents have a role principals establish a leadership environment but what happens in classroom to classroom is really what's going to make the difference we recognize that when you have a brand new staff at least a large percentage of teachers for example our first year 43 percent of the staff were new we'll be hiring again this time a lot of our staff will be first and second year teachers they need strong really effective training in how to do classroom management, how to teach the curriculum that we have, what's considered good effective strategies. We have those in place. Those trainings begin this year. They need to be getting good, solid feedback from the principals who are observing them. We're training our principals on how to do that. That begin this year. They need to be knowing what to look for when they're looking at student performance data and how to make decisions. That kind of thing begin this year. And they need a strong curriculum. Every single one of those things begin this year, and every single single one of those is a valid way to go at it. We just have to now do a good job of implementing. In addition, we have to take a look at how our buildings are structured. When I say that, the ninth through 12th grade uh, high school has a new focus around career pathways. We're looking at re reconfiguring the middle school so it's seventh and eighth grade and smaller, and then making a more nurturing environment at the elementary levels while we're still seeking some partnerships. So all of those places, I literally had to begin simultaneously. Um, our guest is Dr. Charles Pearson, who's the new superintendent of Normandy Schools. As of last week, he was just announced uh, that he is going to take over the uh, much maligned, criticized uh, disarray of the Normandy School District. Uh, when we come back, we're going to take a couple more phone calls, or we're going to ask you a a couple more, more questions, but uh, the structure of school in 2015, mm. um, Normandy is different than Fort Zumwalt or it's just this, yes. the two different worlds. Yes. And so why do we continue to sort of work or, or, or go about them the same way? It seems that 
we have three months off in the summer is ridiculous. It seems we have the sort of nine to three. It just seems like we are teaching 21st century children with 18th century um, uh, ideas. Uh, agree or disagree? Um, I agree in many ways, but I also know that there are, there are, I guess I'd have to call them some subtle changes that take place. For example, um, while school may theoretically end in June, uh, per districts who are able to do it, and even our district through summer school, can still continue learning through that particular period. Even though many of those ideas are valid, sometimes what ends up getting in the way of districts is something as, as, as uh, simple or fundamental as fiscal ability to do so. Mm -hmm. But the acknowledgement of what, everything you just said, we do need to be thinking about school differently. Uh, longer days, uh, longer years, but here's what's interesting. It's not just the length of time. What has to happen during that time has to be very, very, very effective. An example, uh, we talk about homework a lot in our district. We talk about the fact that uh, children don't have textbooks. When you look at an idea like homework, having homework go home is one thing, but what it will be the purpose of it. You don't introduce a new concept in homework. You reinforce what children have learned during the day in it. So while we can go to longer days and all that, we have to be very certain that we are changing what we're doing during that time period or we still don't get the results we need. The other thing is, um, one of the saddest things from where I sat and watched Ferguson <laughs> And I know Ferguson isn't Normandy, but when they canceled school because school was unsafe. Yes, yes. They still kept the lunchroom open for the free lunch program. Yes. So it was unsafe to educate them, <laughs> but there was nowhere else for them to go and eat. So they had to navigate the unsafe neighborhoods to go eat the free lunch program. That's the type of student they're getting in those schools, whereas somewhere else in Clayton and Ladue, they're getting a different type of kid. That is true, but but I'll say this too that even in the Claytons and Ladues, because again our students transfer there, right. um, there is a segment of their population who also still has the exact same needs as our children have. So in a sense, all districts have to address it. Some for a district like mine, a district like Riverview Gardens, a district like Jennings, it is our total population that we have to look at. So the systems we put in place are designed to meet those needs. We use the phrase wraparound services. Candidly, while we can impact teaching effectiveness, we have to also be sure that the wraparound services are there to support children. When we say children come to school every day prepared to learn, there's something that has to be in place for that to happen. You know, the hungry child can't learn. The child who's afraid can't learn as effectively. The child who does not know if they're going to be living in the same place the next two days can't, he can't come as focused unless we work to support those things. Dr. Charles Parson, our guest, the new superintendent of Normandy Schools. You want to stick, stick around for another segment, please? Absolutely. Thank you. 922 here, Big 550, KTRS, R&R. &R, uh